Okay, welcome. My name's Jonathan. This is a 30 minute bowspring practice. So it is short, it is sweet, and it is efficient. So that will be the focus of the practice today and how bowspring is efficient. So saying that, let's start right away in crouching cat position. So crouching cat position is essentially just down dog, starting there in traditional yoga, but then moving a little bit forward. So your chin is in line with your wrists, bend your knees and tilt your sit bones high up into the air. Now, just changing things up a little bit, move your right hand just a little closer to your left hand. So it's a bit more in the middle and then rise onto your left fingertips, making a dome hand position. So the dome hand isn't to weight bear, but uh, to just have something to press out against. Lift the rib cage higher, tilt your sit bones up higher, and then opportunity here to lift your left hand, cup the back of your head and point your elbow straight down, pausing here in a one-armed crouching cat position. Level six is to lift both hands and cup the back of your head. Jokes aside, lower your hand, move your right hand a little bit out so the left hand is directly under your nose, rise onto your right fingertips, bend your knees, tilt your sit bones up, push down with the hands, lift the rib cage up high, and then opportunity to lift your right hand, cup the back of your head, hug your elbow in, lift your chin, deep breath in, pause and hold, and then lower your hand back to crouching cat position. Just a step forward about halfway to your hands and rise up, place both hands to your knees. With both hands to your knees, push your knees forward and move your hips back. You're welcome to assist the manual lift by grabbing your own butt and bloop, lifting it up. Then reach your arms forward, bend your elbows, touch the tips of your fingers together for globe hands position. Move your hips back tilt your chest forward, push the fingers into each other, and then look forward, push off of your back foot to lift it up into the air. Bend your standing leg, tilt forward, and then pulse your legs up and down. Okay, now swing your left leg up and over your right leg. What we would traditionally do is eagle pose, but make a kickstand. Instead of wrapping the foot all the way around, just get it to the outside of your foot, the left foot to the outside of the right foot. Put the foot to the floor and then cup the back of your head. Point your elbows forward, push your head back into your hands and then lift up, lift your rib cage up, lift your forearms up, rise to your full capacity. And then now unwrap your leg, bring your hands back to globe hands, swing your left leg back behind you, but also move it off to the right as well, what we call zigzag. It's kind of like a curtsy position. So bending the knees, you could even pause, put both hands to your knees, move your hips way back, try to broaden your sit bones, and then go back to globe hands position and pulse with your legs. Returning to the propeller position, just for the transition, lift the back foot up, tilt forward, point your left toes, place the top of your foot down, and then slowly the top of your shin down. Reach your arms forward and wide, one shin balance, lift your front heel, and then lift your front foot in front of you. You can extend it as straight as you want, or just barely hover the foot off the floor. Getting ready for baby mantis position. So lower your right foot down, push your foot forward to move your hips back, and then wide sweeping arc over to the left. Place your left hand down, cup the back of your head with your right hand, hug your elbow in, lift your chin out of your chest, and lift the right side rib cage up as high as you can. You're welcome to add a little bit of a, a pulse. Okay, then push off with your left hand, rise up, reach both arms forward and wide. Slowly slide your right leg back, place your hands down and lift for crouching cat position. A little bit of an interlude here, anywhere from zero to 10 push ups. You're welcome to lower your knees down for this, counting them out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Back up to crouching cat. In crouching cat, lift your heels up high, 
and drop the heels over to the right, tilt your right ear to your right shoulder and rise onto your left fingertips for what's called twisted cat position. Opportunity to create a little bit of a pulse with your legs. So just bending and extending them. Lift the left side rib cage up high, lower your left hand down, lift your heels up and drop your heels over to the left. Rise onto your right fingertips, pulse the legs, rising up and down. Okay, and then hand down, step your left foot forward about halfway to your hands and rise up, place both hands to your knees, just in a, a lunge position, a strong lunge position where you're ready to, to take off and uh, just be careful, especially if you're on a high rise building, you're above the first floor, don't take off and run off the building. Go back to globe hands position, lift your chin, create a little bit of a spring, the spring of bowspring and then push off of your back foot to lift it up into the air. Tilt forward. You can add and work on your strength by pulsing the leg up and down, setting up for eagle position. So swing your right leg up and over your left. Both bring it's called Phoenix. Make a kickstand, push the right foot forward so you actually move the hips back. This time, join your hands together above your head and place the thumbs to the crown. Lift your head up into your thumbs as you gently pull down. Lift the rib cage up and start to lean back. Setting up for that zigzag lunge position. Returning to glow pants. Uncrossing your right leg. Swing it behind you, tilt forward and move the right foot off to the left. So off of your space if you're in the traditional yoga set up yoga mat and then create a little bit of a, a pulse. I still think that bowspring is yoga. It's history is founded in yoga. You practice it on a yoga mat in many yoga studios. Okay, push off of your back foot, lift the foot, point the toes, and then place the top of your foot down and then slowly lower down so you're on the top of your shin. Reach your arms forward and wide to help with the counter bounce. Lift your front heel and then lift your front foot. Opportunity here to extend your leg straighter. Challenge yourself with a balance. The difficulty of the balance, of course, is it gets you in the present moment. Right up there with pain. Pain is good at getting you in the present moment. Uh, lower your left foot down and then wide sweeping arc over to the right. Place your right hand down, cup the back of your head, left hand. Some of you may be able to spot uh, my left index finger. Looks like I have nail polish on it, but I jammed my finger a few months ago in a door and uh, I could not sleep that night because the pain was so intense. So pain keeps you in the present moment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, then push off to slowly rise up and then place your hands down and step back this time just to all fours position. Here in all fours, make a fist with your left hand and lift your left leg out to the side. Pause to hold here. If you want the extra challenge to balance, then lift your left hand, cup the back of your head, hug your elbow in. Extra challenge is sit back slightly towards your right heel and then final stage is to extend the left leg straighter to the side. Oh, that is so tough. Bend your knee, lower your knee, lower your hand and switch sides. So making a fist with the right hand, lift your right leg out to the side, move the hips back, find the balance. Then the real balance, cup the back of your head, right hand, elbow in, sit back a little bit, pull the knee forward. So it's not straightening your leg behind you. It's keep the knee forward and straighten your leg out to the side or even forward. Whoa, that is difficult. Okay, knee down, hand down, back to the first side, except this time it'll just be a lift and lower of your leg. More range of motion, keep the knee bent. Maybe a little bit more challenging for the inner thigh muscle, go with the leg straight. You don't go as far with the thigh, but... <laughs> 
it is challenging for the inner thigh muscles. Okay, one more and then lower your knee down and switch to the other side. So right leg out and down, out and down. Again, extra challenge, you could go with your right leg up and down, up and down. Woo -woo. Okay, and then knee down, lower down onto your elbows and tuck your toes under, lift up for crouching sphinx position. Holding strong here. Move your right foot a little closer to your left foot and lift your left leg out to the side. Then make an outrigger with your left arm and extend your leg straighter out to the side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Extra challenge points here. If you can get your left hand flat, rise up onto your right hand and then step your left foot forward a little bit. Turn your right foot out a little bit and then rise up into what's called side coil. So just a shorter stance version of side angle position. Rest your left forearm to your thigh, pull the right knee in, sink your hips down low and twist towards the right. As you twist to the right, get your low back to move in and up, move your shoulder back and then cup the back of your head right hand. Extra fun here, cup the back of your head with your left hand and then push off of your back foot, pull your right knee in and then step your foot back into the side coil position. So you're pushing off, pulling the knee in and then stepping the foot back. Continue that until you're extremely frustrated either with me or yourself. Don't let it be your beloved or your family member. We don't want to cause any trouble there. Okay, and then last one, push off, pause to hold. Touch your left hand down to the floor, reach your right arm up into the air. Opportunity for a half moon where you grab hold of your foot and kick your foot back behind you. One more full breath in, and then turn to the floor, touch both feet down, both hands down, bow over your legs. You're welcome to grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers, bend your knees, lengthen your spine, lift up halfway. Keep the halfway lift position, try to broaden your sit bones behind you, but push your legs straighter from there. Okay, then hands down, hands down, and step back, step back. Slowly lower all the way down to the ground. And then from here, uh, come into a, a wider sphinx position. So just elbows a little bit further out to the edges of the mat, and then rise up. And that's the one for support, a little bit easier. Sometimes we look for a bit more of a challenge. So same position with the arms, except hover them and then lift up to your capacity. You're welcome to join the feet together and lift your legs as well. It's frustrating because it's just a position that doesn't necessarily look great in a photograph. It doesn't reflect the effort that you put into it. Okay, then bring your elbows down, interlace your fingers, push with your knees down to send your hips up and back, tuck your toes under and rise up into what is called crouching sphinx, often called down or um, dolphin pose, forearm dog. Move your left foot a little closer to your right foot, lift your right leg out to the side. You're welcome to make a little outrigger position with your right hand and extend your leg straighter to the side. That gets you on fire fast, hello. And then the challenge is, can you come onto your right hand and lift up to your left hand and step your foot forward and end up in side coil position. So shorter version, bending your knees, getting down low, twisting fully, and then cup the back of your head with your left hand. And what's nice with bowspring isn't, there isn't necessarily a 
final form of the pose where you get into and then just hold. You can actually be in the pose and sway around and move a little bit. It can be nice to practice with music. I'm just stumbling here. Now cup the back of your head with your right hand, push off of your back foot, pull the knee forward, and then move your foot back. Pull the knee forward and move back and continue that. Try to go slow. Slow wins the race. I actually don't know, is there any type of sport where the slower you are, you win? Any game? Add it in the comments. Okay, and then push off of the back foot. Keep the back foot lifted. Lower your right hand down. You could just go in more of a traditional yoga side of half moon or bend your left knee, grab hold of your foot, kick your foot back and twist from right to left. And kicking the foot back, you could go hand flatter to the ground or not. Okay, then turn to the floor, hand down and rise up into chair position. Here in chair though, keep the bend of your knees, but place your hands to your knees, tilt forward. Push your knees forward to move the tops of your thighs back. So embrace the curve of your low back, but at the same time, tuck your chin in, broaden through your upper back and even lift the back of your ribs higher up. So it's finding a balance between a big arch of your low back, but a, a big roundedness of your upper back. Okay, and then join your hands together, place your thumbs to the top of your head and begin to arc over to the right. So push your head up into your thumbs. If you prefer cupping the back of your head, you're welcome to do that. Also with your feet a little bit hip distance apart, as you arc to the right, you're welcome to cross the right arm, hold the outside of the left elbow and gently nudge the elbow down. As you push back up into that resistance and begin to twist and spin towards the upper left. If you wanna go even further, instead of your elbow, hold the outside of your knee and add the twist. Oh, that feels good. Could stay here all day. Maybe not all day, I'd get hungry. And then come all the way back up and arc over towards the left this time. So just finding balance. Just as I said, there isn't a final form of the pose. You're welcome to pulse the legs in the pose, or you could even tick tock out and then back into the pose. Just exploring your edge. And again, opportunity to hold the outside of the right elbow, gently pull the elbow down, then lift and broaden the shoulder blade higher as you spin and twist up or hold the outside of your knee. If you're holding the outside of your knee, pull your knee in towards the midline, resist back against the hand, twist fully, broaden your sit bones, and then inhale and come all the way up. Reach both arms forward in front of you. Have the feet wide, bend your knees, and swaying seaweed. Just swaying, moving the rib cage first and allowing the arms to follow everyone's favorite swaying seaweed. Whenever I'm in class and a teacher says, one minute, whatever you wanna do, I quickly stand up and I get my seaweed swaying. Okay, now keep your hips back with the wide-legged position. Slowly hinge down, touch your fingertips, and then go hands bright, step back, step back. Lower your knees to the ground. Move your hips back and lift your left leg out to the side. This time, hold the back side of your left thigh with your left hand. Extend your leg straighter to the side. Extra challenge, right hand on fingertips. Super challenge is can you lift your right hand up away from the ground as well. Cheers, might, holy. Okay, bend your knee. Lower your right hand down, lower left hand, lower left knee. Switching to the second side, lift your right leg out. And then begin to straighten your leg as you hold the underside of your right thigh, right hand. Sit your hips back towards your left heel. 
rise onto your left fingertips and then opportunity to lift the left hand pause to hold whoa 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 okay and then lower your hand down hand down move your way back to crouching cat in crouching cat lift your right leg forward notice if when i say lift you always lift it back so there's many directions you can lift it lift it forward cross your ankle in front of your thigh so it's like a figure four shape and then slowly lower your shin down so shin at a 45 degree angle both spring version of pigeon push the hands forward to move your hips back and then once you have your hips back think of locking them back in place kind of like caps lock on and then pull with your hands to move your rib cage forward and slowly lower down onto your elbows Do you remember when when you put cap lock, caps lock on it would actually stay down like it would physically like stick those were the good old days Okay, challenge here, should you choose to accept, it's gonna be a balance on your right hand. Keep the leg position, tuck your left toes under, and then spin your left foot to the left. So it's just the figure four position, but in more of a side plank variation. Hi! You could sweep the arm up and over. If you're getting really good at this pose, you can lift both hands away from the ground. Hold strong, three, two, one, and touch your hands down, switch feet. Right foot back, lift your left leg forward, cross your ankle over your thigh, and slowly place the shins down to the ground. Use your hands, push your hands forward to move your hips back, push the knees out away from each other, left to left, right to right, and then try to make your rib cage as long as possible. I will actually do this pose at a wall to push the head into and then really gently of course lower down onto your elbows if you are on your elbows keep a lift of your rib cage so there isn't a collapse same with your chin and by keeping the chin lifted it is easier to breathe think of uh, cpr skills Okay, the challenge is there, side plank position, keep your left leg as it is, tuck your right toes under, spin your right foot to the side, and lift your right arm up into the air to pause, hold, and breathe. Okay, and then touch your hands down, lower back onto your knees, sit about a quarter of the way towards the heels so it's like you're going into child's pose but not quite sometimes call it teenager pose because you don't really know what's going on or what you're doing you have no control over your body zoinks voice is changing uh, keep the hips back though they are behind the knees and then move your hands over towards the left as you do that Pull with your right hand. Imagine being able to pull and hold on to something as you push forward with your left hand. And this is a, a great visualization. You could do this standing if you're at one of those bar classes, ballet bar, and then move over to the other side. So hands go over to the right, left hip goes back. Think of pulling with the left hand as you push forward with your right hand, tilt your right ear to your right shoulder, big stretch, tack the left hip back. Oh, that feels great. Okay, and then hand down. Tuck your toes under, lift your knees to hover, turn your knees to the left and lower down onto your right hip. Slide your right arm long and pause, lying on your side, hover the left leg, place your left hand to the front of your thigh, Push the knee forward, move your hips back, and then open the leg up, just as we did in all fours. Hold the back of your thigh and extend your leg straighter from there. The shaking is real. That is not an act. This is very difficile, très difficile pour moi. Je suis une anana. 
en français. And then bend your knee, lower your left hand down, push your way back up to all fours and spin over to the other side. So lying on your left side body. A little bit more common in Pilates. There are yoga poses on your side. It's just they're not taught very often. Uh, this actually is a version of a yoga pose called Vishnu's Couch. So hover the right leg, pull the right knee in, resist back. Open the knee up, hold under your thigh, extend your leg straighter. Whoa, not necessarily the most relaxing couch to ever be on. One of my friends has got a new couch this weekend. It's pretty comfy. Okay, then roll all the way onto your back. Wiggle your way to the center of your space if you aren't there already. And then robot arms, dig down with your elbows, push with your feet, and lift your hips up for bridge pose. If you want to do a bit more of a bowspring variation, you happen to have a block with you. Keep the lift of your chest, but drop your hips down to the block so your belly button actually stays high and the hips drop down. And then from there, bring one knee in towards your chest. Extend your leg up into the air. And switch, lower your foot and lift the other leg. Left knee in, left leg up. Okay, and then lower your foot. Open your feet fairly wide, as wide as the mat with your knees bent, and drop your knees over to the right as you look over your left shoulder. If you have the flexibility and capability, desire to cross your right ankle over your left thigh, you're welcome to do that. For me, it can sometimes just kind of annoy the pose, which is a good mantra to remember. Just because you can doesn't mean you always should. Come all the way up and drop your knees over to the other side. Look towards the right. And you're welcome to lift your left foot, cross it over your right thigh. Okay, then uncross your foot if you did so. Come all the way back up. Pull both knees in towards you. Hold first the tops of your shins. Notice when you pull your knees in that your low back tends to press down into the floor. So try to get to a point where you move your knees away from your upper body and you get just enough space that uh, you could start to slide your fingers under your low back. And then from there, open the knees wide, hold the backs of your thighs and start to extend your legs straighter for happy baby position. And if they easily go straight, then bend your knees in closer towards you. Again, trying to keep your low back slightly lifted and once you get to that stage, push your legs straighter. And again, you could do that on repeat where you just bend the knees, bring in, and then work the legs straighter. No free rides here. Okay, and then two options for last pose. One is cup your knees, pause and hold here. Those of you that still got lots of energy, go on up for wheel pose, hands beside your ears, and lift your way up. This is it. We go the wheel to Shavasana transition. So you could stay if you want. Everyone else, release one by one into a final resting position. I mean, as efficient as possible in just a short period of time. Getting as many poses in, as many categories of poses in as possible. But still ultimately making this practice about mindfulness and purposeful movement.
Big breath in. And big breath out. And one more time. And start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Move your head side to side. You're welcome to stretch your arms up and over. Big morning stretch, no matter what time of the day. And bend your knees, roll over to either side, left or right. We'll finish in a tall seated position. So make your way up, whether that's cross-legged or sitting on your heels. Whatever allows you to be comfortable. Please join your hands together. Take a big breath in. And exhale it out. Namaste.